session where we will learn about one more type of storage device known as SCSI drives as well as their connections. SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface which was basically a method of connecting various storage devices to personal computers or as previously known small computer systems. It was one of the very first ways that we could have standardized storage on our computer systems. Using SCSI, we could string a number of devices together. They could be hard drives or even optical storage devices. We could put up to 16 devices on our SCSI chain. Using a single cable and a single SCSI controller, so you were able to just put one interface in your computer and simply hang off the back of the interface 16 different devices. Through the years there have been a number of kinds of SCSI formats. You may see them called as Fast SCSI, Ultra SCSI, Ultra Wide SCSI, Ultra 2 SCSI and so on. Before USB came along, SCSI was the standard method in which you could connect your peripherals together. As we can see in this picture, we could plug in printers, scanners, tape drives, CD-ROM drives or any device that needed an external connection. SCSI was the format that was being used and allowed us to connect 16 different devices on a single controller. The part of SCSI that really makes it powerful is the interface and the communication which is very intelligent in itself as well as simple to plug in. Even though it was possible to control so many diverse kinds of devices, it was a single type of interface which was assigned a number to it. And now we have a SCSI connection on our computer. SCSI has been around for a very long time. But even today, especially in larger server farms, we see SCSI interfaces for hard drive controllers and especially on virtualized environments, we see SCSI being used in large numbers. Even though it is not a physical SCSI connection, we still use the SCSI standard of protocol to communicate over virtualized systems. One particular piece of SCSI that was very important, especially in the older versions of SCSI, was the termination. You could plug in several devices, but the last device had to have what was called a terminator at the end of the chain. That made sure that the SCSI connector knows exactly where the signal ended. Without a terminator, none of these devices would be able to operate properly. The newer SCSI devices tend to have these terminators built into the device and you can enable or disable the terminator just by clicking a button. The older devices however needed a physical terminator that had to be connected to the interface which was situated at the back of the SCSI device. When you have to physically connect the SCSI devices to the SCSI cable that you have whether they are situated inside the computer or outside, you have to give each one of them a completely unique number. This is called the SCSI ID. Now on that single connection that comes out of an interface of the computer, we must provide different IDs. For instance, a boot disk has the SCSI ID 0. If there is a floppy disk, scanner, or any other device, we must assign that with a different ID. For example, floppy disk can be SCSI ID 2 and so on and so forth. Within the SCSI connections, there is a concept of logical units. So each physical SCSI ID on an interface could have logical units inside it. This was quite a common sight. If you plug in an external SCSI storage device that has multiple hard drives inside it, you could give the storage device a SCSI ID and then there would be a logical unit assigned to that individual drive. 
within that single physical drive. You also see these quite a bit when you are working with virtualized systems. As mentioned earlier, the signal which is at the end of the SCSI bus has to be terminated and there might be a physical terminator or might be a termination functionality that has been built into the hard drive itself. Many modern storage devices that we plug in over something called SCSI are completely automated in that way that they configure themselves on the SCSI bus. You can now see an example of what legacy SCSI device. It could be a hard drive, scanner or it could be any other external device. Generally, we see two different types of connectors on the back of the device. If this is the last device in the SCSI chain. As this device has the terminator built in, there is a button that you could push to say that this was the terminating place. Also, here you can see the SCSI ID number unit that is built right into the device as well. There is a little button that would allow you to change the SCSI ID. So when this device is plugged in and communicated across the SCSI bus, everyone knows that this device was the SCSI with the ID number 5. Once you have everything plugged in, it looks something like this. You can now see the SCSI controller, SCSI ID 0, SCSI ID 1 and so on as given in the picture on the screen. They are all chained together with these different SCSI IDs and at the end of this chain as you can see in the image is the terminator which is where the signal has ended. Usually these terminators have a little light so that you can see whether they are active or not. Here is a picture of what the SCSI terminator looks like. The term daisy chain came from the idea where they took daisies and connected them to each other in a similar manner. You could wear these bracelets or they could even be worn on the head. This daisy chaining is how we came up with the idea of plugging in all these devices to each other for creating a chain of devices. Now let us see the connections for SCSI drives. The back of the SCSI drive looks very similar to the back of the other hard drive. These drives uses a very specialized SCSI connector. Usually you have the jumpers that can help you designate the SCSI IDs of these devices. Here you can see the traditional power that you might find so that the device can be powered up inside your computer. You usually have the option for setting your SCSI IDs that we just saw in the SCSI device earlier as well as the interfaces for going in and out of the SCSI connection. The connections of the SCSI devices on the motherboard look very similar to PATA. We have the connections on the motherboard and multiple interfaces on the SCSI. But of course, with PATA or ID connections, we are limited to only two connections, which are master and slave connections. In case of SCSI connections, it does not matter where along this particular cable do we plug in our SCSI device. The determination of how these devices communicate is associated with the IDs that are assigned to them. So you simply plug in to the closest connector to you and plug is all your different SCSI devices. Make sure they have unique IDs and this completes your SCSI communication. Once you follow these rules, SCSI is very simple to get it to run. This provides you with a lot of flexibility to plug in multiple storage devices.